I had all these barriers and all these things placed in front of me, but it doesn't defy any aspect of who I am and what things can stop me. In 2012, life was not easy for Latoya Shante Snell. I had sciatica, a herniated disc. I was severely overweight, and my doctor is telling me, I don't think that you're gonna make it to 30. It was the wake-up call Latoya needed, and without ever running even one mile, she signed up for a half marathon. I looked at it as a bucket list item. I figured that this was something that I would do once and only once, but I fell in love with it really, really quickly. Fueled by her newfound passion, Latoya chronicled her fitness journey through her blog she named Running Fat Check. Although she shed some weight, Latoya says she still faced critics. I started encountering hecklers um, on my blog. I was getting things like, uh, you're fat, um, why don't you lose some more weight? If you're doing all these races, then you're not a runner. You're probably just a walker. And I refuse to allow someone who's never met me to make me feel less than. I know I belong. I know I'm a runner. Today, LaToya's thousands of followers continue to read about her running adventures, which include 21 marathons and five ultra marathons. And there's no stopping her anytime soon. The idea that I am able to reclaim part of my life back that I thought I was going to lose is enough of a reason to keep moving. Incredible. Oh. Welcome, Latoya Shante Snell. Thanks for being with Thank us today. You. Thank you so much. You know, I wonder, for a lot of people that are watching this, they've never taken that first step. What's your message to people who are sitting there who want to but are afraid? You know, most people actually think about the Couch to 5K program, which is basically designed to take you week by week through a program. And instead, I ask people to scale it back even more. If it takes you three or four weeks just to get through week one, that's fine. Don't compare yourself to everyone else that's out there. Compare yourself to yourself. You had said in 2017 when you ran the New York Marathon, there was a heckler. Yes. And that was a real defining moment for you. Yes. Tell us about what happened. So around mile 21 and 22, I was really close to the finish line. And I reached around Marcus Garvey Park. And there was a guy that was from the sidelines. And he said, it's going to take your fat whatever, you know, forever. And it tripped me up. You know, like, you, well, you don't expect someone to heckle you from the sidelines yeah. of a marathon. And... At that moment, I had two options. I, either I can be a true New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> or I hope you, you were, by the way. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. You know, I wanted to, you know, but the, the thing is, you can't allow someone to steal your joy. You know, there's a lot of things that you don't have control over, but when it comes to how you approach a situation, you have complete control of your actions, even when you're caught up. So I decided to go on. Um, at that point, I believe that was probably marathon number 16. <laughs> um, wow. And... I'm still going. How has your life changed since you started this journey? Uh, it's been like a complete like turnaround. Um, I used to be in the culinary industry full time, and now I am a full time athlete, which feels really strange to me. Um, you know, most times people look at your size or their background and they assume, okay, well, um, that doesn't look like an athlete. And I get the opportunity to show people that an athlete doesn't have a look. Um, and it took for me to actually be sponsored by Hoka One One. Um, and that was a defining moment for me. Because at first, I was like, oh, I'm an ambassador. And they're like, no, you perform like an athlete. You do the work as an athlete. You are an athlete. You know, I thought it was so touching. In the green room, your son is here. Yes. And he told me how proud he is of you. <laughs> yes. And you got emotional when he said that. I yeah. mean, it must be incredible to set that kind of example that you need to persevere no matter... You had two choices in 2017. Right. You could have been the New Yorker or done, <laughs> and been a true New Yorker, I should say. Yes. You know, um, these are the moments, like, just one thing can actually change your entire life. The last thing I thought was going to this marathon in 2017 was that I was going to actually continue on. Mm -hmm. During that time, I faced several miscarriages. Um, I was diagnosed freshly with endometriosis. I have several health issues. I have every reason in the world to turn around. And instead, that moment... That defining moment actually changed my career path. In a way, I feel like I'm able to take my past of social work and I'm still able to be a social worker in a different sense with different people. And how do people follow your blog? Because it's a terrific... Mm -hmm. Tell yes. us the name again. So the, the blog is called Running Fat Chef. It's runningfatchef.com, and it's very uncensored, um, something that's probably not safe for TV. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but we talk about, you know, um, through the blog, I treat it as an open diary. And I love talking about the things that people tend to Google. They don't want to ask, like, you know, hey, what happens if you poop on yourself in the middle of a run? Um, all the way down to, this is my first 100K, and I have all these fears about my body. Will my body push through it? And the reality of it is I take my own experiences and I tell people, push forward. One step in front of the other. Don't right. overthink it. You don't know what you're capable of right. until you actually try. Okay. I love that. So and inspiring. I, yeah, I love Incredible. the message that there's no typical athlete. That's so great. Everyone just needs to move. Yes. All right. Thank you, LaToya. Thank we'll be right you. back.